All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, coming back with another fantastic guest, we're going to be having a, a wonderful discussion. It's going to, I don't know where this discussion is going to go. We've got so many different <laughs> topics to discuss here today. Anything from marketing to personal development, to building a business, to writing children's books and, and a children's series. I mean, it's this, <laughs> the amount of information that we could cover in this episode is going to be vast. So I'm going to do my best to keep it condensed and obviously keep it super valuable for you, the listener, but I'm super excited to bring you today, Emmanuel Rose. Emmanuel is a powerful speaker and he's actually an outdoor enthusiast as well. We'll get into that also. He's an acclaimed author of multiple titles. He's a digital marketing specialist and a founder and CEO of Strategic E-Marketing, where they have an expertise and focus on lead generation, branding, advertising, and digital agency operations. He's also a fellow podcaster, his podcast, Marketing in the Age of AI. We're going to talk about AI today and marketing. One thing you've probably heard, if you've listened to any of my episodes, I'm fascinated with AI. Uh, we'll, we'll dive deep into what, uh, what he sees in the world of AI and in the world of marketing as well. He also is a, a podcast. I actually just discovered this one just before we hopped on of the Nature Bound podcast. He didn't actually have that listed in his bio, but I found that by doing some research and, and searching for him. As I mentioned, he's an outdoor enthusiast, and I listened to a quick episode of that as well, where he talks about fly fishing and hunting and, and just being outdoors, which I'm here in Indiana. We don't have as much of that as where he's coming from, and we'll let him describe where that is. But at the same time, that's super cool as well. And as I mentioned, he's also he's a children's he has a children's book series. And I believe, and he'll describe it a little bit better, but he began writing this series for his grandson, his grandson Henry. And that resonates with me a ton. Meaning, as you know, I have a grandson named Rowan. He's eight months old now. And that's part of the the reason why I'm even producing the podcast. I know that at some point, someday, I'm hoping. He'll be able to turn these episodes on, right? Whether he's watching me, whether he's listening to me, and he'll get some information, right? He'll learn more about me, which is super cool. So when I heard that he wrote this book series for his uh, grandson, that's super cool. So yeah, I want to dive into that too. That's what I'm saying. This conversation, I have no idea where it's going to go, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So let me stop babbling. Let me bring Emmanuel. Let's bring you onto the show and let's uh, let's start diving in and see where we can where we can weave and bobbing and go through this with this uh, uh, the episode today. Oh, thanks, Randy. I appreciate uh, appreciate you having me on today. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. As I told you, I was doing some research and I was even finding things that you didn't necessarily even have on the different parts of your bio. So I was, yeah, I was like, wow. I, I, and I wrote a note real quick. I was like, wow, I need to write that down. I need to ask him about this and about this and about that. But without all that, I, I went through a, you know, a lot of the bullet point list of about you, but I would love for you to just take a few minutes and go as deep and as wide as you'd like, right? Tell everybody a little bit <laughs> sure. about yourself, where you're from, uh, we talked about your marketing expertise and your marketing agency. You're obviously a multiple uh, book author. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't need to repeat what I said. Let's let's hear it <laughs> all about from you. Let's what's what's your story? Yeah, well, I was uh, born and raised in Central California uh, in the kind of the, what in those days was farm farm country, and uh, and uh, had very working class parents, and and got to see what it was to work hard. Right. And uh, and luckily, my dad was very committed to being outside on the weekends when he had time off. And so I I grew up, uh, you know, from the time I, my mom tied me to a tree when I was one. So I wouldn't go crawling into the creek, you know, that kind of that kind of thing. So grew up fly fishing and, and bird hunting. And um, and then as soon as I could, uh, as soon as I could get out of town, uh, you know, I went 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 to college and um, I've lived all over the Western United States and uh, always been interested in whatever, whatever the newest trends in business uh, are, you know, and then um, always very committed to, to my time outside because uh, that's as fulfilling uh, for me as, as uh, any business deal or, or creative act. And um, I went through a couple of bad bad situations of being an employee in my thirties and forties. And then, uh, I, I finally got, uh, I got the second renege on a bonus from, uh, from where I was working after having created millions of dollars in business 
And uh, I said, well, clearly I'm not manageable and I'm going to have to work for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I started, uh, started strategic e-marketing. And that was right when social media was such a force. It, it couldn't be, couldn't be avoided. And uh, I've been just a chapter ahead of my clients for the last 15 years. <laughs> so you were on the forefront of all of that when social media was first coming out. So what time frame? I, I Anyways, yeah. What time frame was that? Approximately would have been like was... uh, 2009. Yeah, so, yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Right? When it was really getting where businesses were finally paying attention to it, as a small business was paying attention to it. Wow. So then, from there, you you obviously have authored several books as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, I have a, a the series of marketing books is around authenticity and marketing, and. Uh, uh, the first book is about marketing to Generation Z and uh, those those kids that are between 10 and 25, 28 uh, right now. And um, and in doing that research of, you know, how how to leverage social media and, and tell stories that they cared about and the social CEO. And there was also this dark side of uh, of all the the digital time. You know, it's pretty well documented now. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the the downsides for the brain and the psyche of being that connected all the time. And so then that triggered me to write some self-development books also. So um, as a, it's kind of the point counterpoint. So I, I've, I could feel good that I wasn't just uh, just on the dark side. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Uh, yeah. And then the marketing in the age of AI and and obviously, this is the the biggest um, biggest topic of conversation inside not just marketing but inside of business in general is how 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 we're going to leverage these tools and um, how we're going to keep them under control so that uh, so that they don't uh, take over everything, right? Yes, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's scary is not the word for me because I'm not scared by it, but at the same time, cautious, right? Trying to learn how to use it and hopeful that the folks that are really behind the wheel of the different chat bots and the different GPTs and all that are being aware of what's being created at the same time. But yeah, the opportunity uh, from what I see is fantastic. We're about the same age. And so I remember moving from the analog life to the digital yeah. life. And I say that even I, to my kids all the time. I, I mean, I was, <laughs> Pre cell phone, obviously, um, yeah. even pre cable. We didn't. I didn't have cable TV until I was in high school. Um, right. Yeah, if you wanted to go find your friends, you got you jumped in your car and you took off and you went and looked for them. Right? You didn't have any way to to find them like you can today, right. <laughs> which is just fascinating to me. So I witnessed the digital, and like you were talking about the 09, 10, 11, 12 time frame for myself personally. But then that's how I see AI as being very similar, if not even exponentially greater with the impact moving forward. And that's how I try to express it to folks, in my opinion. But your boots on the ground, you're kind of seeing it. And I know you're working with it every day. Do you have an opinion on that as far as the difference between how we went from the analog phase to the digital phase? But now we're obviously moving into the artificial intelligent phase and kind of how those interlap with each other. Yeah. The speed of innovation is, is a uh, hundred times what we saw. I mean, I was the same. I would go to the library to get the Thomas registry to find the address of a company I wanted to send a letter to. Right. Like th those are my first prospecting activities. The Dewey um, decimal system. Do we, is that even a thing anymore? I mean, no, yeah, I mean, no, I don't even think it there's is. There's no right? reason. I mean, I mean, why would no, you, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, now I have, I have, I'm getting leads from real time search. As soon as somebody types in Google, that leads going in, into my high level account or, or sending email and then retargeting them by, by ads on, on Facebook and Instagram. You know, I'm like, I don't, I don't touch any of that stuff now that once it's set up. So, uh, it's, it's inconceivable the sp speed, the lead that we have compared to what it was in the in the past time. Yeah. So what do you say to those folks that are, like I said, scared isn't the word I use, but they are a little bit scared. They're a little bit fearful of, you know, a lot of folks are out there 
talking about, you know, it's going to be the end of the world and they're going to take over and all the, you know, the machines and the machine, all that stuff that yeah. it just, yeah. I mean, I, I understand that there's some things to be concerned about, but do you have anything when people approach you and say, you know, what's your opinion on that type of thought? Yeah, I see the AI tools that we have right now are, are, are tools and we have to learn how to deploy them. Just like we learned how to drive a car, you know, the, a, a, an automobile in the hands of a 10 year old, is a is a very scary and dangerous situation, right? Uh, me driving the car not quite so dangerous. Um, so it's about um, managing the tools and, and understanding where we have to maintain the the creative human spark in order to uh, give it uh, the depth of character necessary to communicate versus just trying to transact and make a quick buck. That you know and. There, we are starting to get though into these spaces that, uh, like with the new cars, right? Like we just got a a, a twenty twenty four uh, car, and you know it it wants to keep me from changing lanes and things mm -hmm. like that. So we're we're in a spot where, and I think that's one of my lines is um, when it it stops us from doing what we know we need to do as a creative human being. And it tries to redirect us. So, so I, some of that fear is, is justified. And, uh, but like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. So we just have to con continue to maintain the space of control as much as possible. <laughs> How much do you, uh, assuming you're touching it every day, or at least your team is, right? How often do you get in and make sure that it is doing what you are expecting it to do if that makes any sense with your contact yeah. with your clients and prospects and that type uh, of thing. It's it's every every anything we produce by by AI has to be reviewed. It's hmm. not it's not autonomous, right? Even once you've set it up, it's not autonomous. It still has uh, you know hallucinations is what the term is and pulls in bad data and directs things that are goofy. And we've seen lots of examples of that with the when Google had their image generator and the historical images that it produced were so disconnected from reality that it was, it was laughable. So uh, you've got to review everything that, you know, I'd say it gives about C plus work right now. And hmm. in 18 months, it'll probably be B plus work, right? Uh, because that's how quick it moves. That's how fast it's moving. Yeah. That's how fast from my understanding is, I, and I'm just an amateur at it, right? So anytime, I, anything I'm speaking about is just from my amateur use. I was on it just a little bit ago, yeah. uh, trying to help my wife uh, with her business, some marketing ideas. I mean, it's great for uh, just to get some ideas, right? To get some help with brainstorming. That's the word I was yeah. trying to come up with. Just brainstorming yeah. ideas, uh, getting some concepts. Um, it's just an amazing tool. Like you said, how quickly it can produce things, but then you, like you said, you refine it based on your human intelligence, your human creativity, yeah. which then brings that back into the element to be able to distribute or offer that to the uh, public, right? So that way they can read that and, and have it be beneficial. Uh, do you see, Are you in, once again, you're probably working with it every day. Do you see a lot of times where folks are not necessarily putting the eyeballs on it and you just can see and tell <laughs> yeah. that it's I mean, AI got to do is open your LinkedIn DMs <laughs> and you can see the, you know, the craziness in there. Um, you know, like there's, I'm on, I'm on some list and it, it keeps calling me uh, like they want me to get, uh, apply for these female writer grants, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> come on, you know, like, and that, yeah, there's a lot of bad marketing, a lot of spray and pray marketing that's happened because, uh, the lead records are available at such a big level now. And then the ability to, to match that up and, and email people. So there's a lot of bad marketing. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of being a marketing or speaking of marketing, right. You being the marketing expert, I'd love to guide, dive in a little deep, maybe give the folks a little bit of some context, maybe some tools and tips and things that they can even look at within their own marketing, whether they're using AI or maybe they are part of the people that are just spraying and praying, right? Trying to hopefully get some people and get some leads. What are some tactical tips that you can think of that you're implementing right now with the generation of AI, but obviously then using the, the tips that you've learned through all your experience up to this point? Yeah, it's a beautiful process now where you can, uh, you can put your domain in and say, scan my website and, and this is my ideal client profile. And how can I 
uh, update the copy on my home page and these three landing pages in order to speak more clearly to them. And then you get that list. You can build your topics. You can uh, write some rough draft of SEO copy and and then you know re rebuild content on your your website. Uh, we know that people are are self educating uh, at, at, at an amazing level now when they're buying products and services. Uh, the latest stat is six hours they're spending in a B two B transaction researching uh, what they need to consider. So. Um, you don't have to have six hours worth of content, but you should definitely have two or three hours and all the different learning methods in video, in audio, in uh, memes and white papers and eBooks, you know, you've got to reformat things. And, and that's why I make video the centerpiece of, of marketing campaigns, just like what we're doing right here to take this transcript and use something like Opus clips to, to make the shorts which are being viewed 10 to one over long form video and then transcripting and then creating social posts and then developing, uh, developing eBooks uh, from, from this. So this, this kind of um, hub and spoke concept that we've been using for a long time with content marketing is now as critical as ever you know, to, to hit all those different styles and then the different social media channels. Let's unpack that because I, I try to do that. Myself. Well, let's do that because I think that'd be super valuable because yeah. that's what I'm trying to do with my content. Yeah. Uh, maybe some folks are out there that are, maybe they have a podcast. Maybe they don't. Maybe they are an aspiring entrepreneur. Or maybe they would like to have a podcast uh, or even they, they have a small business, right? And they're trying to figure out how to start that that marketing. So that hub and spoke, I believe is what you called it, right? I think yeah. that's what I've yeah. heard it be called as well. Yeah. Walk us through a little bit deeper with that idea that you create the content once. So for example, folks, we're we're recording today, right? This, this recording obviously creates some video. I can take this video and I can create some clips. As he mentioned, I won't, I'm not the expert. Please help us. You, you briefly went over that. I would love for you to go a little bit deeper and go yeah. a little bit on, 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 even if you have some of the tools, you mentioned Opus clips, if you have any others on how even the distribution process of how do you get it from the content that you create out to all the, the to the different channels. Anyways, yeah, I, I hope sure. that was kind of a, a large, broad question. And hopefully you can kind of bring that in a little bit deeper or uh, tighter, but yeah, just curious on kind of going a little bit deeper into that thought. Yeah. It's called prospecting by interviewing. And if, if there isn't, if, if somebody's listening and they've thought about starting a podcast and I'm going to encourage you a hundred percent to start it because you can reach out to your ideal clients and ask to interview them uh, in order to create a relationship. Uh, mm. Plus they're, they're coming in as an expert, a subject matter expert, and then you're creating a lot of content uh, that can then go out to, to your properties. So uh, what I use, what we use in the agency for, for distribution into social is called hero post. Uh, and it's, it's very simple, uh, easy to use like a lot of those tools. Um, and then uh, so the concept is you have a you have a guest. You can plug that guest LinkedIn profile into chat and say, "What are the ten questions I should ask in order to get the content that I need to produce uh, interesting uh, social media posts for my ideal client profile?" And here's my ideal client profile. So you're able to use the the, the uh, AI to help develop some questions, and then um, and then record. I like to do the live broadcast myself. Uh, because like on LinkedIn and Instagram, you have a chance to get people who are on the platform cruising around. And, mm -hmm. and so you can increase your reach that way. Plus, if you have a guest that has good reach, then you've just, you've just leveraged um, that, that activity. Um, and then from there, then we take it and, and put it into uh, Clipscribe or Opus Clips, which are very similar tools. And uh, those are going to subtitle create the, the blog post and which from the transcript and then uh, from the from the blog post then you can put that in a chat and, or uh, uh, otter.ai and uh, then that will pull out key points and quotes and then those quotes you can then um, create uh, meme style uh, social posts right and so 
you've got it all layers on top of each other if you could start with video first and and leverage those three or four tools uh, uh, it, it makes it so that a, a solopreneur or a small team can uh, produce high high quality stuff and you include canva in that and there's all kinds of uh, videos on YouTube on how to integrate uh, chat and Canva and and produce not just the quotes that you need, but then also uh, images and and ultimately the designs that match up um, with the social. <laughs> I love that the whole time. I and I'm taking notes. I I'm ready. <laughs> So Hero Post, that's one actually that's been on my radar for a little while. I'm looking for a distribution uh, service to help me uh, to basically post it once, right? But then it goes yep. all over. I'm looking for that. Right. I've actually been looking into the Hero Post. Let me just ask you about that. They're going actually into a, an upgrade. Are you using the previous version or are you using the new AI version of the Hero Post? Let's see. Do I you... think we're still using the previous version. Um, okay. I, didn't, I, have I didn't, in... Yeah, we didn't need need the, the updated uh, features. But I was trying to decide in, if in I three needed months, them as well. <laughs> in three months, we probably will because it will be totally different. <laughs> I agree. So, yeah, I was literally just looking at that yesterday. That's, that's So that was a question for myself, folks. I apologize if that doesn't resonate with anything that you've got going on. But I was, trying, <laughs> I was trying to figure out which, if I needed to just keep the, the current version that I have or if I needed to upgrade. So I appreciate the answer there. So, yes, yeah. that's a, I am passionate about doing the videos, right? That's where... All of my content starts with video, starts with this, right? Whether I'm recording my solo episodes or a recording like this with a guest. And then it, like you said, it so easily is not the right word, but quickly, relatively yep. easily, you can just create so much uh, content just by grabbing a decent microphone, having a decent camera with some lights and just getting some courage to speak into a camera about a topic that you're either passionate about or else you, like you said, you bring on folks like, like you, man, you, you, you're an expert in an area that I want to learn about. Like I said, I'm, I'm taking notes right. uh, and then just have a conversation with folks, build that rapport. And you'll be amazed at how quickly you can get a catalog of content that you almost have too much. I'll be honest with you. I'm about 160 episodes into my uh, podcast. I've got access to so much content. It's like, what do I want to put out there today? You know, it's yeah, like, oh, yeah, it's, what, it's but true. Because you want to be impactful too, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it ends up being an avalanche of content. I'm even for me uh, because I'm guesting and hosting. I have, I, I, you know, we're probably working on 20 episodes right now, and that doesn't <laughs> count the the 25 that are in the can and the 50 from last year, right? So, um, so it does, it becomes like you're saying, you get to choose and, um, or you increase your frequency, right. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just depends on, on, on who you're talking to and how much you need to be out there. Um, so uh, it's the same thing on the lead generation side, right? This, this idea that we can get these real time leads, develop drip campaigns and then, um, market and then retarget and create custom audiences all. Uh, all in a seamless, uh, just setting it up. It's a, it's two hours of setup and then it's running in the background, which is what, to me, what software was meant to do. Hmm. Yeah. Just, it's a tool as we've been talking yeah. about, right? It's a tool yeah. that if you, if used properly, take some maintenance, can't just set it and forget it forever. But at the same time, yeah, being a tool that you can just set it and just let it do what it does in the background, which is, which is super neat. If you can catch that pass and, and really start to, to learn from folks like you, Emmanuel, and, and implement some of the things that we've been talking about even already today. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the e-marketing e piece. Meaning the question I have is some people are saying that email marketing is kind of dead. You don't need to collect email leads or anything like that versus just having followers and people on social media and that kind of thing. I'm curious where you stand in that conversation with email marketing versus just gaining followers and listeners or, or in whatever platform you're on. Yeah. I mean, if, if I own a restaurant and I don't have a customer list because I'm just counting on my Facebook page to draw people in, then I've, I've I'm missing about 50% of my income versus mm having an email and a text list and being able to uh, have uh, have a special night for uh, once a month for people on that list and then having uh, a tastemakers club that has a special tasting menu uh, once a month. Right. And and so I as a entrepreneur, I don't like to be passive and hopeful. Right. I want to be able to take actions that are outreach 
and then understand um, how how I'm speaking to my target markets, and they could be my customers or my past customers as well as my prospects. Um, but I've got to take my customer base and know who those people are, and I need to carve out my AAA customers and and know who's spending the most money, and then reach out with offers. We got to be making offers every ten minutes. It, it has to be amazingly frequent because we're getting between 10 and 30,000 messages a day as purchasers. So uh, we have to, we have to be able to, to get in the conversation and, and it starts with the customer list. I don't, I don't think that will ever change uh, in, in uh, business that you have to have your customer list, get to know your customers and you have to build outbound in order to, uh, to make new offers because they want to participate with us. That's why they're, they're doing business with us in the first place. So if a small business is out there and they haven't built this uh, system yet that we're talking about here today, the lead magnet or the thing that they need to collect that lead, do you have any suggestions on even kind of where to begin? And you can kind of even maybe uh, we can kind of go into maybe a specific category or you mentioned a restaurant. Let's say yeah. somebody does have a restaurant or, or, you name it and maybe just give some folks some ideas of kind of how would they go about giving them an offer, a free offer, but then in return, obviously they would collect that lead, whether an email or a phone number, that type of thing, that way they can connect. Yeah. There's a great, uh, I think it's Jay Abraham. Who's the, uh, one of the geniuses in the marketing industry. You know, he's created billions and billions of dollars in gross revenue. Uh, he talks about it in terms of, a new customer who's never come in into your restaurant that you give them free dessert. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then they, they trade their contact information for that. And then the second time they come in, then you give them one free entree. And, and then the third time that they come in uh, that you are, you know, you bring them a bottle of champagne or whatever is appropriate for that person. And after three visits like that of being treated special, then you have you've created a brand advocate and then you send them something on their birthday to bring in uh, a, a party of two or a party of four and and you spiff them on on their birthday um, so it, it takes uh what is what we call high value low cost gifts right um and even if you broke even on those first three meals that uh, lifetime value that customer even over 12 months uh, is going to more than cover the cost of those first three interactions. Love it. So is the interactions you mentioned a few minutes ago, as far as the, the uh, amount of outbound needs to be a lot, right? You need to be making multiple offers a lot of the time. Yeah. Do you see that the distraction piece with going on with, with the world these days with our devices and that kind of thing, is that really being in a huge impact with getting, even if somebody is an advocate for a particular business, right? Are they still struggling with getting some of that response back even in the digital age right? that we're dealing and, with today? Um, you know, one of the, one of the really uh, secret activities that, that we started with in our career was direct mail. And that's a great way to meet, to reach, uh, you know, end users, mm -hmm. retail level uh, users, because they're still getting the mail at their house. And so, you know, postcard or every door direct mail, is a, a relatively inexpensive uh, way to to uh, reach out to retail level people. Um, for B two B, I really like dimensional pieces where we send a, a, a gift of some sort. There's all sorts of clever ways to do it where you could send people a remote control car, but they have to call to get the remote control right. Or um, or that uh, the other biggest thing for B two B is that anytime you get a referral from a, a friend, family, uh, somebody in your network or a customer, you, you got to send them a gift and uh, send them a thank you gift. And that could be, you know, it depends on what they like, but it has to be a personalized gift to them, not a marketing gift with your logo on it. Right. So mm -hmm. if you know, the guy loves NASCAR, you know, that the, the, the woman, you know, likes uh, Chanel, you know, that you, that you personalize it to them. And then, then that's where um, that begins the, the powerful idea of reciprocity. And then they, they're looking for opportunities to continue to refer for you. Love that. Super powerful. So you mentioned, and you wrote the book on it, marketing to the Gen Z generation. Let's dive into that a little bit. I've got kids in that Gen Z 
uh, era themselves. And I'm always picking their brains. What are they thinking? What are they seeing for myself? Right. Because it's just a different perspective of life. Like we talked about, I grew up in the analog age and they've, they've not really ever lived without the digital things that we've gotten taken for granted really in our life. So what are some of the things that you're seeing or, or some of the tips and tricks when it comes to talking to that Gen Z generation to try to get them engaged in, in, in business and in marketing? Well, the first thing is they have uh, the shortest attention span of any humans ever lived. 2.6 seconds. <laughs> oh, actually, and this is not derogatory. This is factual. Uh, it's it's a, sh- a shorter attention span than a goldfish. <laughs> and I can attest to that. Kids, if you're listening, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. being the first truly digital generation, they're finally attuned to uh, to tricky marketing and, and insincere marketing. And uh, the idea of the social CEO is critical, that you have the biggest influencer needs to be the person with the most power inside the brand, Kylie Jenner, Richard Branson, Elon Musk. Those are the the rock stars that we emulate in the activities that we do. And that is why being a podcast guest is so critical because you have, uh, you generate a lot of content of yourself uh, uh, professing and assessing and, and showing what you believe in business and in your life. And even if you just, if a person did it one time a month, they would have five years worth of content to be able to uh, explain their philosophy, their company, and why their products and services are are valuable compared to competitor products and services. And then the other thing is that they really want to know about where you stand in this in the social milieu, and and they want to know what you're involved in in your community. And uh, we're all involved in things. We're all you know supporting a rotary or a, a school or. Uh, you know, nature organizations, summer camps. So it's important to talk about uh, those those donations and those that participation as a business, so that you can draw in the human side of of the company and the brand. Love that. Appreciate you going there. I think it's one of those things that sometimes those of us that are of the uh, analog age it just struggle to communicate properly, right? With that that younger generation, as I mentioned, I'm trying to pick my brains of, of the brains of my kids and even their friends as much as I possibly can. What's going on? What are they seeing? And yeah, that matches up very close to exactly what you just said. So I appreciate you going there. That's awesome. Fantastic. So let's pivot a little bit. Let's go into and talk about you being an outdoorsman. Let's talk about how important that is to you because I know your business and we just went in deep with the marketing piece. Obviously you're an expert in that area, but talk about how getting outdoors being in, in the environment of just nature and how that has impacted your life and then your business and your ability to communicate and your ability to show up and persuade and all those types of things. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's important enough to me. It's vital enough that I, I uh, assign a one week a month to be disconnected from technology and, and from the internet and that I'm out doing, doing something, uh, fishing, camping, hunting, hiking, uh, participating uh, in, in really uh, fundamental human activities, <laughs> feeling the wind. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously in order to do that, I have an amazing team that can, um, that can keep everything running for me. Um, but the bigger thing is, and it was like we were talking about earlier, an outgrowth of the research I did uh, for Gen Z, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not immune to the same stuff, right? If if I'm connect, c- connected all the time, then uh, then I'm going to end up with the same uh, the same dysfunction of uh, brain chemistry and and potentially psyche. Uh, so, uh, and then I I kind of bring that into the pattern of my work day, which is, you know, I get up very early, I spend time meditating in the morning, and then I take frequent breaks during the day to to break the hold that the, uh, the dopamine drip has um, and the cortisol, right? So um, not th- those are valuable chemicals in the body, but not at the levels that we are produce them uh, from, from all the digital interaction. So I try to I manage that purposefully during the day, and then I manage it purposefully uh, every month. That's fantastic. So just the idea of, of turning everything off for a week at a time 
Yeah, every awesome. month. That's super cool. Yeah. I, I've heard of folks doing it for days at a time. I met a gentleman. I actually have that episode coming out here very soon that he said he turns his off uh, one day per week from like a 24 hour period, which I was like, wow, that's, that's super cool. As you mentioned, I, I had an episode that dropped uh, this morning as of this recording. And I was talking about how I try and I'm trying to get better at it. Just leaving the phone, even if it's just in the house, right? Leaving, just leaving it not taking it with me on a walk, getting out into it, you know, out into nature uh, as much as possibly can, depending on where you live and how important that is. Like you said, to your psyche, to your, uh, the way you feel, the way you uh, are showing up, the way you're being. Yeah. Talk about how I assume that you have some really creative moments come to you in that downtime. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm just envisioning, because that's where a lot of my creativity comes from. As I mentioned, this podcast uh, episode that dropped today, the idea came from it because I was disconnected from everything else that was going on. I was just out there in nature, listening to the birds singing, the blue, beautiful blue sky. Wow. And this idea came to me about what I wanted to share. I'm just curious, at a week, for a week at a time, Tell me kind of what the epiphanies and breakthroughs you have during that. Well, the the, the biggest impact for me was uh, that's how that's how the idea that the children's books for the grandchildren came came up was sitting next to a river after a, a long long hike, uh, a fruitless turkey hunt, and uh, and I was just sitting there relaxing by the river and. And then, you know, it just all washed over me and I saw the red tail hawk circling and, and then it just, you know, just was like a flash of, okay, Winaha Henry, the red tail hawk, and I'm going to write these stories. Right. And, and then the important part, and it's not always the easy part is that it, when you do have those epiphanies, you got to draw that back into your daily activity and put action behind it. Right. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, so I that that's where it started, and I, I've written I've written twenty five of them. I have I've only published three of them because it's quite a process to get the illustration and all those sure. things done. Um, but uh, yeah, I was I brought that I brought that back, and and uh, it's been very rewarding um, for for me and and to have that gift for the grandchildren and for the the kids and uh, and and my partner as well. So that. Uh... So once again, I just, I love that idea that you're just, you're taking your environment, you're taking the digital space, which is your life, right? Your life is the digital space, but then you're shutting it off because of a team that you've built and all the experience that, experiences that you have. Like you said, everything's a tool. So you've set up tools and, and things and practices in place where it allows you then to get this space for yourself. But then it, that's where your creativity comes in. You said it, and I think that's the most important piece. Maybe go a little bit deeper as far as you, many people, I think, have ideas but then they don't take action on them. Can you talk about that? How you have bridged? Uh, Cause once again, without the digital things in your, in your space, in your environment, when you might have an idea, are you writing them down? Are you, how are you getting from that idea to moving forward with, with some action? For me, it, it starts with the calendar, right. And, and to book some time every day uh, that's not filled up with somebody else's concerns. And, uh, Usually that's earlier in the morning, right? Because that's before the fires start. So, I mean, I, I get up at 3.30 every day and then that's when I start my work day. And I've got four or five hours uh, of, of space, but it could just be 15 minutes of space. And that would be the toehold that somebody needs to, to get started with it. Uh, but it, it really, you have to schedule it. It, ha it has to be important enough to you to put it on your schedule and, and, and uh, honor that that time do what you can and then you know it's like everything over time it adds up and um and you you start uh building these new new habits and, and creating space for that creation so all these books that you've written how long has it been or how long let's say you get an idea and you said you've written 25 of the series with this children's book but you published three but at the same time you've written 25 how long has that been in that process from from idea to now today where where 25 have been been written i think it's been four years now four years and even then that's a lot 
in a very short period of time, a relatively short period of time. So it's just these concentrated effort times that you mentioned, right? So you're up at 3.30 a.m. and you're on the West Coast. I was trying to think in my mind what time that actually is here. That's early. Holy cow. I try to get up at 6. 6 a.m. is my latest that I try to get up. And I try to get two to three hours in before life starts happening around my house, right? Same kind of idea, just not as drastically early as you. So then I'm curious, your sleep, uh, when do you, do you go to bed very early as well? I try to, and you know, this time of the year, it's tough because this, this, the lights out until nine thirty or 10. So, but yeah, you know, nine o'clock is, is about as late as I want to stay up. Uh, Cause it is early, but it, it, it's, I based it on the way that the brain is and sleep and that three thirty is kind of a magic time uh, in theta theta brain waves and then i can transfer that directly into a meditation for an hour and then then i can uh, start to uh, start to either do something creative or, or get into client work that's creative and uh, it's a it's a much uh, better mood through the whole day well that's sparking a thought in my mind because <laughs> yeah probably for the last right. year if not more i wake up about every morning between 3 and 4 a.m almost like in a dead, I'm like awake. Right. Is that what, is that have something I've never studied anything like that. And I've, I've never heard anything say anybody say anything like what you just shared. Is that, does that, you think that has anything to do with that? I'm not, you're not a doctor. I get that. Right. I'm just curious on your opinion. <laughs> it may be, it may be that you're, uh, yeah. It may be your natural biorhythm. Right. And that if you were to get up and, and just do creative do some creative writing for for 30 minutes and then go back to bed that would be using that time well right um and i do know that we sleep differently than pre-electric people slept they would talk about you know they go to bed when it was dark and then sometimes you know i've read things where they get up in the basically in the middle of the night and they would do some other activities and then they go back to sleep until you know until sunrise mm -hmm. so you know, we live in so many ways artificially because of, uh, because of electricity. So that's so folks, I, as I mentioned from the very beginning of this episode, I, I told you we were going to go in some many different directions and this is the one, or this is one of them that I had no idea where, where we were going to go, but this is, this is fascinating to me. So I'm just going to, I, I've got one more question. And so, so do you set an alarm there for the three thirty time frame, or do you just naturally wake up at that? Have you have you built that into your your like you said your your naturalness of yourself? Yeah, no, it's still it's it still takes an alarm, um, but I do when I hear that alarm, I'm awake. You know, like it's not like it's a draggy thing. So, um, but yeah, it, it is. It's an extreme, and I wouldn't expect anybody else to do it. But um, through the readings that I've done and and I've validated from two different sources. One is an Indian guru and the other is Dr. Dispenza, who's a, a, a doctor and, a, you know, a, if you know Dr. Dispenza, but he does everything through rational science. And, and so I've, I triangulated it through those two sources. And so uh, that's been my commitment for the last three years. And it's paid, uh, it's paid good dividends for me. And, um, but it's, you know, it's like anything, it's a discipline and, um, but it, it, it doesn't, everybody doesn't have to do it, but to schedule some time and get up a little bit earlier so that you know that you have the, that time gap between, uh, your commitments and your commit commitment to yourself. That that's to me, the, the point. Yep. Love that. So that's, as I mentioned, folks, I, I get up around six, uh, and a lot of times that's for me, right? I do my journaling. I do a little bit of meditation myself. And then a lot of times I'm prepping for a podcast as this for this interview today, right? So I'm sitting down trying to get to know the guests that I'm going to have on, even if we haven't met. I try to get to the, to the point where I feel like I can easily have a conversation with them, even though yeah. uh, it uh, it might be the first time actually we've actually met. So those are the things that I do in the morning. And like you said, it's it's amazing what you can get done in a relatively short period of time in the morning. I can't imagine getting up that early to how much I actually could get done. Uh, but that's also interesting. Like I said, every morning. <laughs> And I say every, every is probably not, is probably a little bit too strong of a word, but a lot of the time, three, three thirty, four 4 a.m., I'm rolling over and I look right at the clock and it's like, 
it's the same time every time. And it's like, what in the world is going on? That's fast. I'm going to dig a little deeper on that. So I appreciate you bringing that up into my awareness. So that, that's super cool. Let's pivot one more time. I, Cause I, I want to get into the, to the children's series, uh, super passionate about my grandson, Rowan. And I know you are about your grandchildren as well. Obviously you spend a lot of time, a lot of effort trying to, to get thoughts, ideas, into a book form <laughs> right. for them as they evolve and grow into the humans that they're going to be out there in society as well. Can you take us a little bit into the story itself? You don't have to obviously go chapter by chapter. You said you have 25 different volumes at this point. Just maybe give us you know, the high level view of kind of what you were trying to, to get through uh, to Henry, I believe is his name, right? Which is uh, part of the title. So that's super cool. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So there's three grandkids in two different cities and um, I wanted to be able to, uh, to impact them, even though we're remote from them. Right. And so, um, I studied with a man named Tom Brown, who is, uh, he's, uh, uh, a, a Aboriginal teacher from the Lip and Apache band of, uh, um, Indians in, uh, in Arizona. And, and well, his word for it is called coyote teaching. And, and basically I, I try to stack in as many layers of teaching into each story as possible. So, um, values, clarification, natural history, uh, psychology, um, you know, animal, animal, uh, facts, uh, facts about the Winaha river and the Grand Ron river, um, so that it has, they could read it until they're 15 and they're going to get different things out of it. The parents reading it get things out of it. Um, so uh, these first three books were, one was about forest fire because there were some fires in Tahoe and Henry was worried about that. And I'm like, all right, well, fire has forest fire has, has a positive and a negative. And let's let, I, I explored what it was that was the positive side of it. And in that book, I had uh, Doug fur seeds, so when you get the book, you also get some tree seeds that you can plant with your kids. Um, the second one um, was is about uh, about stillness and the secret of the grouse, and and so it's it's priming the kids to be able to sit still and meditate, you know, eventually. Um, and then I just started with some chapter books. So as they get older, I'm changing changing the form factor to match their age, and so. Um, the one that I wrote for Henry was about, um, the secret rock and it was about being active in solving, uh, problems. It was dirt, uh, you know, a Creek that's polluted and he rallies the community to clean it up and, and, and make a difference in his community. The one that I wrote for Cora is about being, um, uh, graceful and, uh, generous with people. And, um, uh, and that's, that's, you know, that's her, that's her little, uh, thing that she can deal with. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, they're kind of, they're customized for each grandkid, but they're big enough issues that they match what we all have to go through in development as a human being and, and, and sort out what it is to, to, uh, be ourselves, but to be a good participant in the world and the community around us. Love that. Love that. That's super cool. I'm going to check that out. As I mentioned uh, with, with my little one, I'm always going to be looking for different things to try to help him learn as he grows, right? Even, uh, I don't know everything. I'm not going to proclaim that I do, but obviously getting different perspectives and learning different things from different people, different walks of life. That's, that's super important. That's super cool. So I appreciate you sharing that. But I was hoping to prod you with one more, to see if anything was hitting you as far as a nugget of wisdom we could leave the guests or leave the folks with uh, the audience. Um, just something, maybe some inspiration, some ideas that are that are kind of hitting you, maybe in the times that you've been alone uh, to try to help people uh, find some hope in their life at this point. Anything that, that hits you today? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I've been been through some dark times, you know, with uh, divorce and father passing away and and you know, being, not having a job. And, and I always came back to what is important to me and what did I want to create? And, and, and to use, use that um, biggest picture uh, vision for myself to, to draw me out of, of that, the depth of, um, of unhappiness. And um, I believe that we all have a, a unique creative spark and, uh, 
and it takes a little bit of time away, a little bit of time alone to let the 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 messages clear and to, to hear yourself or myself. And uh, and so sit sit on the magic rock once a day and, and think about what you're doing in your life and what you want to be doing and then take a little action every day. Love that. Love that. Thanks for sharing. That's great. That resonates so much with what I try to do every day. When I try to, to talk about here on the podcast, I appreciate you sharing that message. So if folks are out there, they want to learn more about the services that you provide as far as the marketing piece, or even they want to learn more about the books and, and things like that, whether it's even the, the marketing books or also the, uh, the children's series that you have produced. What are the best places for people to get in contact with you, learn more about everything you have to, to provide? Yeah, you can find me at emmanuelrose.com. You can type that into Google and uh, I should be number one for, uh, for uh, links on that or on LinkedIn is a great spot to, to catch up. So folks, I highly recommend uh, when I learned from or about Emmanuel, uh, it's probably been about a month ago and I was reading through his bio, as I mentioned, even before uh, when we first hit record here, uh, I was even learning more things about him today. He's a fascinating human. He's got so many things going on in his life as far as his business, right? The marketing piece, he's so vast in his experience with that. And we talked about from the, the analog aid days that, that we grew up through to now obviously with the, the advent of AI and how that's changing the world and how he's on top of that. To being able to shut everything off sure. a week at a time, once a month, that is fascinating to me. And I would, uh, I, I wish we had more time. I would love to kind of even deep, dig deeper into that. Maybe we'll get you back on and maybe we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but try to get yourself con disconnected from the, uh, the devices, the distractions, the stuff that are, I mean, I, I appreciate you listening to us here on the podcast, but at the same time, once we're done, turn everything off, go take a walk, Go sit outside, go try to be by yourself, collect some thoughts. Uh, you'll be surprised at what you can actually generate. Be creative. Uh, as I've mentioned, a lot of the times the things, the ideas that I get are from my alone times by myself uh, outside, or it can be inside too, uh, but just in a quiet state. And I would recommend that you try to do that as well. Go out there and follow Emmanuel. Uh, we'll have all the links uh, to his website. We'll have the links to his books. Uh, and get connected with Emmanuel. See if he can't help you in your business with, from a marketing standpoint, or maybe he might be able to help you if you've got a young child or a young person in your life that could benefit from his books as well. So Emmanuel, man, I just appreciate, want to express gratitude one more time for you to jumping on here and sharing so much wisdom here with us here on the Rich Mind Podcast. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Randy. I, I appreciate uh, the, the conversation and, uh, and, and your time today as well. Absolutely. It's been a lot of fun. So folks go out there, focus on being great. I hope you found a ton of value in this episode. If you have, uh, I would appreciate if you'd share it with your family and friends that would help me spread the message of the rich mind podcast. And then you can also go out there on your uh, podcast platform of choice and you can leave us a, a review and uh, share us what you with me and with us, what you like, what you don't like. And I will do my best to try to bring back more guests just like Emmanuel here today and try to add as much value as we can into your life. So as I mentioned, go out there, focus on being great. Have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back with the next guest again very soon. Until then, bye now.